All right. Find yourself a seat. Um, if you didn't make it early enough, you have to sit at the front of the class. That is always the punishment for people who come late. You've got to sit at the very front. All right, we have uh, an agenda and an APM packet that was sent out to you a week or so ago. If you don't have one, just trust me. We're going to follow the agenda. First, uh, an opening prayer and then uh, our, the roster and a quorum as we pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who by thy Holy Spirit didst preside in the council of the blessed apostles, and has promised through thy Son Jesus Christ to be with thy church to the end of the world, we beseech thee to be with thy council of thy church here assembled in thy name and presence. Save us from all error, ignorance, pride, and prejudice. And of thy great mercy vouchsafe we thee so to direct, sanctify, and govern us in our work by the mighty power of thy Holy Ghost, that the comfortable gospel of Christ may be truly preached, truly received, and truly followed in all places to the breaking down of the kingdom of sin, Satan, and death, till at length the whole of thy dispersed sheep being gathered into one fold shall become partakers of everlasting life through the merits and death of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. All right, our meeting is convened. Uh, second order of business is the presentation and adoption of roster of voting members. We have uh, checked that according to our current roster, we have a quorum. So this meeting shall commence with all validity. And our third point, therefore, is uh, the minutes of the last annual parish meeting from November 15th, 2020. The intention of sending these all out to you is that if you read them and find an error or an amendment to be made, that you would suggest a correction now. So the floor is open for corrections or adjustments to the minutes from last annual meeting. Crickets. <laughs> I'm hearing crickets. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Okay. Now we need a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Do I, do I hear a motion from the floor? Oh, and what was that? Uh, Joe? Yeah. Joe Spigner has made the move to uh, accept the minutes as presented. I have second? I second. Ann Green has seconded. It's now on the floor. Any discussion? No discussion. I'll call the question. All in favor of accepting the minutes from last year's annual meeting as presented, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. No opposed, uh, no opposed, no opposition. Uh, the motion passes, the minutes are accepted as, as presented, and thank you to Janice Wofford for preparing those for us. Thank you very much. All right, we move on there uh, for to point number four, the treasurer's report, uh, presentation and approval of the proposed uh, 20, 2022 budget. The floor is open for Mr. Dale Ellis. Speaking of Janice, I don't see her in the room. She's right there. Oh. <laughs> I was turning my FAA medical and <laughs> here, take a microphone. This is being recorded for posterity. Uh, oh dear. We're not recorded, but Yeah. Well, technology. This thing has a feature. Well, it shut itself off. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it shut itself completely down. This projector has a, a uh, audiovisual mute feature, and apparently, you know, we all have this learning curve. Apparently, if it's in mute for more than four or five minutes, it just shuts the whole projector down. So now we're waiting for things to come back to life. Okay. Would you believe I came in here this past week to 
Make sure all this is working. Aha. There you go. All right. Press report for 2021, APM. This is going to be a very quick summary and projections for 2021, plus some highlights of the 2022 budget. Uh, John Evans has threatened me with excommunication if I take more than about five minutes. <laughs> budget receipts for 2021 are projected to be about $178,000 versus the projected receipts of about $187,500. So budget 178, projected 187. We're well ahead of budget. We're about 5.3% over budget. Get on this, that's on the giving side. Uh, on the expenditure side of the budget, we are budgeted at 184 and change. The actual expenditure for 2021 look like they're going to be about 180, which is about 2.4% under budget. Now, mind you, we projected at the last APM, we projected a uh, 2600 or probably $6,200 negative cash flow, when in fact it looks like we're going to have about 7,700 positive cash flow. Positive is good for those who. <laughs> we have had some non-budgeted expenses in 2021, the major one being the parking lot resale project of about $3,000. This was charged to a repair reserve account. Uh, the mortgage balances as of the first of this year was 123 and change. Uh, so far, we've paid that down, uh, paid the principal down by uh, about almost $28,000 or about 22%. The balance today of both mortgages is almost 96,000, call it just under $96,000. Uh, highlights of the 2022 budget, the finance committee started hammering these things out in September. Uh, we project, and our projection is bold, we project that we're going to have a giving budget of about $211,000 in 2022. This is nearly a 13% increase over projected 2021 giving. Uh, disbursements. We are projecting or are budgeting about $210,000 for uh, expenditures in 2022. This is about a 17% increase over 2021. Uh, the highlights of the budget, the giving on the, giving, on the spending side, I should say, administration is up about 30%, largely due to increases in cost of goods and postage and the like. Administration go up, facilities slight increase to keep pace with some inflation. Uh, under fixed expenses, we have a major change, and we're adding compensation package for the curate. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah. Oh, phew. All right. Well, this item for 2022 shows $10,000. The actual amount is $20,000. Uh, what is not being reflected directly is we, we have applied for, and we have been given word that we have approved for a $10,000 grant from the APA to support the curate in 2022. So basically, the, we as a church have to cough up, cough up about $10,000 to have the curate on a half-time basis. Uh, on the expenses side, fixed expenses, the rector's compensation is being raised about 10%. This is to keep, uh, rate, keep up with inflation and give him a slight pay raise. Uh, on the other side, areas of the expenditure side, there's small adjustments that have been proposed. Bottom line, with God's help, we will have a positive cash flow in this budget. Yes, this is a bold budget, but we as a church need to be bold. I'm going to leave it at that. Questions? I, I'm, I made this fast. Amen. When, is, <laughs> when is the mortgage projected to be paid off? When it's paid off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't looked at the, you know, it's, it's, it'll come down pretty fast. I imagine another three years, maybe less. Yeah. But, you know, that's, we, we've got, by mortgage standards, we've got some pretty cheap money. So, 
Yeah. Is that mortgage an open-ended mortgage, where it's for the fixed mortgage? Can we go back and say we need another twenty-five thousand? We add it onto that mortgage. No. No. If you did, you have to renegotiate the whole thing. It's not. Uh, you're probably thinking more on the lines of a, a home equity line of credit. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a business mortgage. Yeah. Well, yeah. No. This. Now we have a we have a twenty thousand dollar line of credit that we can, but we don't want to really use that unless we absolutely have to. When do you have to refinance that mortgage again? Let me renegotiate which are. Yeah, we got two of them. Uh, the f I forget. I think Regions is coming up this coming year, and. Um, uh, <clears throat> South State Bank is coming up in about two years. Regents is here, South State Bank is the lot. Yes, yeah. Yeah, the, the lot next door is free and clear. The, this particular site, this, this building and, and the land has one mortgage with Regions. The lot next door has a little bit smaller mortgage uh, with South State Bank. It's about 30000 or about 60000 Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and we're paying that down pretty aggressively. So. Any further questions here uh, for the treasurer? How'd I do, Coach? Hey, <laughs> all right. You know, nobody threw up. So that's <laughs> <laughs> Biggest change is we're about to take on a new staff member at the church, uh, Joshua Kimbrell, as a half-time curate. Um, that that's that's the major uh, increase. I don't hear any more questions, and so I'll assume that we're ready for a motion to accept the proposed 2022 budget. Do I hear a motion? Uh, moved by Bob Attaway. Do I hear a second? second. Oh, is this not on? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Bob Ambrose has seconded it. It's on. It's on me. Okay. Uh, the move has uh, been made. Movement has been made by uh, Bob Attaway and seconded by Bob uh, Ambrose. <laughs> Bob A. That's too hard. <laughs> I'm tired. Okay. All right, so the motion is officially on the floor now for any official discussion about the budget. I'm listening for either crickets or voices. I'm hearing crickets. So, uh, all in favor of accepting the budget as proposed, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. Hearing no opposition, the motion passes, passes, passes. And our budget is approved for 2022. Thank you very much. That's one of the major items of business today. So we move on in our agenda to reports from the senior and the junior warden. You, anybody want to go first? How about senior warden? You're, you're first up on the list here. All right. And since we're passing this microphone around, this is just being broadcast to members that are watching. You can clip this on to you if you like. On your lapel. Thank you. Testing. Yeah, a little bit more. Okay. Good. Um, and let me put these on so I can see. Philippians 3, 12 and 14 says, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Nobody wants to forget 2021 more than I do along with 2020. But I was reminded from the verses that I gave that yes, my brother and sisters in Christ, that is exactly what we're supposed to do. But 
what have we learned from the past year should be part of our building up in Christ Jesus kingdom. This past year, we have had this, some goodbyes and some hellos as transitions and changes are part of life, but because our church family is so strong, we've been able to pray and work together as we have met each change while continuing our walk down God's path. We have been able to reinstate our worship of God that had to be interrupted for a time. You know the old saying, you don't know how much you appreciate something until it's been taken away from you. We are so thankful that we have been able to resume our beautiful worship once again. We're very thankful and grateful to having Bob Glick taking over the organ and also adding Brian Kirby to the music staff by taking over the choir. And a very big thank you to Allison Harrison for filling in when Lois Schneider retired at the beginning of the year. We also saw our postulant, Josh Kimbrell, being ordained to the diaconate and looking forward to when he will finally be installed as priest. Philippians 3.14 says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And what a blessing this has been. Once again, I remind us that we have much to look forward to here at St. George and challenging times lay ahead for us. All of us need to ask what we can do to further the work of our Lord here at St. George. And I say that again, we all need to look at what we can do here at this parish. We are a healthy and vibrant parish, and I thank all of you for continuing to do such great work in God's vineyard. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I am thankful for the opportunity that I've had to serve as senior warden and what a blessing it has been to work with Father Paul during this time. And I appreciate all of y'all's support. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. We turn now to our junior warden, Mr. John Evans. Uh, how many of you received the information about uh, what the junior warden's been doing this past year? Did any of you read it? <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. Do <laughs> um, you have any questions about what was done in behalf of the church and the Lord? Well, there's my report. <laughs> A couple things that I might <clears throat> want to mention is that, uh, first off, for those of, in this church that have been junior wardens, you know how thankless a job it really is. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Uh, I had a lot of help, which is really a blessing, and I really appreciate that. And you probably saw some of the names, if you read the report, uh, that there were plenty of people that really assisted the junior warden in his job, which was good. One thing I would like to remind the church <clears throat> is that this is really a facility that needs to be maintained and taken care of. And right now, we have plenty of cash in the bank to be able to take care of surprises. It's, a lot of it's just unallocated, meaning it's not, not specified for any particular use. But we've got some pretty large expenses that are going to be coming up here in the next two to three years, One, not the least of which may be a roof. And if you haven't priced out a roof lately for a, a commercial roof for a structure like this with the pitch that we've got, which is really quite steep, um, it's going to be pretty expensive. My guess is it's going to be somewhere between fifty dollars and $70,000 to re-roof the church. <clears throat> That's a lot. Now, one of the other things that you need to know that's in the works is that we are currently investigating attaching to the public sewer system. <clears throat> that's been, previous to this time, thought to be not possible. Well, it still may not be possible, but right now we believe that it is, and we believe that we're going to get permission from the powers that be that we'll be allowed to attach to the 
the system. The only question will then be whether the church wants to or not. Now bear in mind, if we don't, it really constrains the ability to use all of the property that is here. And I'm talking about not just this property, but the lots that are vacant right now. As long as we're on a septic system, there's really no way to expand much. <clears throat> you can expand a little bit, but not very much. So keep that in mind, in the back of your mind, for the future of this church and its growth. It's very important. Do, does anybody have any questions about any of that? Just so you know, to be able to do the front end portion of connecting to the, the uh, public sewer system, it could cost upwards of $50,000. Something to consider. <laughs> That's just not pocket change. <laughs> John, ultimately, though, if the building plan go ahead for another church building on the new property, you're going to have to have the Cook County sewer, right? Yes, there's really no way to uh, expand the, the um, aseptic tank system and provide additional parking as well because you really can't cover up the, the uh, the drain field, it's just not possible. You can't even, we, we've got a septic system right now that extends out towards the uh, uh, retention pond, and if we chose to, we couldn't do anything with that property, including really just drive across it. It's not really good to be driving across a drain field. You may crush some of the lines that are out there. That doesn't mean you will, it's likely that you would though over time. So it really constrains the use of the property. So it's something we really have to plan on doing. If we get permission, which we really right now believe we will, um, we should actually get that in this next week or two. And I'm sure the next vestry meeting will have that information brought to them. And that's really something that you'll be heartily considering this next year as to how to actually get that done. I think. That's my bet. Yeah. Uh, yes, we've, uh, we've thought about quite a bit of that, and uh, we have several people that are chomping at the bit to cut some of these things down. <laughs> uh, it's really probably appropriate to do that closer to maybe January and let, let things just stay the way they are during Christmas time and all that celebration time, and then get busy on it in January sometime when the leaves are all down and the sap's down and all of those things. Uh, there's, a, there's a very strong uh, reason to remove the, uh, uh, the trees that are right there next to the uh, sanctuary and nave because they are possibly infiltrating the, the septic system and also the foundation of the uh, sanctuary and nave. So those things need to be really considered to be removed pretty much first. And I was thinking that we might even be able to just move the, the tree that's the, on the corner there, and I've investigated that, but I've not heard back from the people yet that would be able to do that. And I eventually will, but I'll probably turn that over to the new junior warden to pursue. It could be that we could move that tree instead of just cut it down. <laughs> Depends on the cost. <laughs> Any others? John, do you want to talk about the Bradford Tanners? Pardon me? The Bradford uh, wh Where's our, oh shoot, she's gone. <laughs> she chicken. Is she in there in the kitchen? I'd have, uh, and I'd have Mary Marchant come up here and talk about because she's really the grounds person. And, but I'll tell you what the story is. Uh, if you haven't been reading the paper, you probably don't know that Clemson University came out with a notice that said that Brad, Bradford pears now are an invasive, invasive species that need to be removed at almost any cost. <laughs> you know, get rid of them as soon as you can. Uh, Mary, would you come up and talk a little bit about the uh, Bradford pears and the plan for doing that? Uh, Mary's been really kind of spearheading that along with all the work that she did to keep these trucks out of our parking lot out here for this construction area, which is the reason why our sign didn't get knocked down, by the way. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> 
just tell them about the uh, Bradford Pears and what we're trying to do there. Oh, we, um, I had read in the newspaper about the Clemson Extension Service letting us know that the um, Bradford Pears everywhere in the state are now um, listed as invasive species and they are asking people to remove those that they have and if you have them in your personal property then if you take one down at some point Clemson will give you another tree a native tree to replace that with up to 10 trees so if you have 10 Brantford pears at some point they may give you 10 trees free trees to plant in their places but that was sort of an offing that you know, perhaps would happen. It depended on how many they had. But they are encouraging everyone in the state to remove Bradford pears because they do come up everywhere, as some of you probably know. Um, we do want to move ahead and remove the ones that we have, and I think you've already covered that about removing them. Just no. briefly. Yeah, can... that's all. Um, we'll probably get to that perhaps in the early, early spring, like February or March and we'll be looking for volunteers. Um, if it's not on a volunteer basis, um, we know where you live. <laughs> um, we'll come and get you. <laughs> yeah, I'll send John after you. Mr. Bowdle. How many Bradford pear trees do we have? I think there are five. Well, at least three, three for sure. Yeah. Five is maybe rare, aren't they? They're lying in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other side of the parking lot, and then a couple on this side. Yeah. I'm sorry? I don't know what it would be. And I don't even know if they would be available to us at that point when we remove ours. I'm just going to ask what we would consider to replace them. No idea. They've not said anything about that. And I think, you know, they'll get X amount of replacement trees, and it's going to probably be first come, first serve. I don't know. They have not said anything about that. Anything else for the junior warden or for the groundskeeper? The groundskeeper. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mary. Yes. Thank you, John. <laughs> All right. On our agenda, I think it's down to me now. All right. We have uh, a rector's report, which is funny because the rector's report that I was going to give sounded a lot like Tim's report and sounded then after that a lot like John's report and so I'm left with very little to report on. So how about this? Here's a question uh, that we can answer. It has to do with all this stuff that we're talking about. It has to do with the budget. It has to do with taking on Joshua Kimbrell. It has to do with uh, connecting to the sewer. It has to do with the future of St. George. And the question is, is God going to abandon us and leave us to die? No, every year we have the fear that he might, he might, he might. Every year he doesn't, okay? We, we pitched last year that we would, we would hit way low on the budget, and we hit way above the budget. This next year we're thinking, why don't we just aim high <laughs> and, see, and see if God can meet us up there somewhere? Why not? You know, he always uh, takes care of us anyway. When we're looking at the future, we've been uh, thinking there's no way for us to expand this building. We're trapped. There's nothing we can do. And now we're starting to say, well, maybe there is something we can do. Let's just do that. Let's see if we can, uh, if, and it's $50,000. Well, over the course of the next century, that'll sound like nothing. next to nothing. So uh, if you can connect to the sewer, that means you can expand the building or the parking lot or anything in any direction you want on the property, including the original building, just pushing it forward 40 feet and giving us extra pews. Uh, moving the parking lot over to expand. You can do all of that if you're not traipsing across uh, sewer and, and septic tanks and, and drainage lines and all that. All that stuff seems to be sort of down in the weeds except for that it's a part of a larger question of if we try to do something, is the Lord going to smash us under His heel and we'll all be ruined and dispersed in five years? Hasn't happened yet. It's probably not going to happen. Why don't we go the other way? Let's think that God is actually probably going to bless us. Look, look at what He's done. So if we review this year, I know I'm retracing some steps here of Tim, but uh, at the end of this last year, we were looking into a pandemic 
and the organist choir master Lois Schneider, who had served faithfully and with her husband for many years, Bill Schneider, was ready to retire and leave. And suddenly, within 10 seconds, we had another organist, and we had a volunteer to be a choir master, and then we had another choir master, and turns out the, the other choir master is also an organist, and so it turns out the Lord actually had us covered the whole time. There wasn't actually a reason for any kind of fretting. And so I think the lesson for us is let us not fret. Let us presume the Lord is going to take care of us into the future. When we're think thinking about cutting down trees, replacing trees, expanding parking lots, uh, changing from septic to, to sewer, um, having concert series. I wonder if anyone will come. Oh, yeah, people will come. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna build on faith here. One of the main things that's going on at this church that has never happened before is a second clergyman. We all know that this second clergyman is already gaining in popularity in the parishes of the deanery. So we have to find a way to make him unpopular. <laughs> if not, that's fine, because we have all then, even after one year, invested in the future of the church and providing a trained and experienced clergyman for one of our deanery parishes or somewhere else, and he can serve for the rest of his life. And what have we done? We've been a part of, of developing the future of the church. Oh, we can't afford that. You know, the Lord will crush us under his heel. No, he won't. I think he'll reward us for it, and I think it'll be a good thing. Everything that God is going to do at St. George is going to be a good thing. This last year, um, we've come out of COVID restrictions, Austria can go back in. We're not doing it. <laughs> so we're not going back into COVID restrictions. Um, and I, you know, you, I, get, I like the mandate that the Lord has given us. If you read the rector's report in the annual parish meeting or packet, you'll see. He gave us three, uh, three mandates. We should follow those. Um, a new commandment I give you to love one another as I have loved you. Do this in remembrance of me and feed my sheep. That's three mandates that I can go by. <laughs> and the other mandates may, may come and go and may, uh, may need to be abided here and there. But the mandate to stop doing those three things is not good. Um, do our best not to have to, to acquiesce to any of that. In the last year, I was made the area dean, the dean of Appalachia, and I became very reverend. So I'm now the very reverend Paul Rivard. Anyhow, um, I look forward to serving the deanery as uh, the dean of Appalachia. Um, I've been appointed as an advisor to a new domestic missions board, which has its eye on planting and revitalizing churches on the eastern, in the eastern diocese. There is uh, a, a, a good chance that in the near future, the APA will have some funding to actually do that. And so it won't be just talking about planting churches Oh, we'll be planting churches. We've got lots of young clergy coming up ready to take some of those. It's an encouraging time in the, in, in the APA. In the last year, we've also seen a new bishop uh, come as Bishop Grundorf has retired. Bishop Chandler Holder Jones has taken over as our diocesan and presiding bishop. He'll be visiting us in February doing confirmations and reception of new members and we welcome him. It's a time of, of uh, change and a little bit of wonder in the mind. Uh, but nevertheless, the Lord will not crush us under his heel. Let us banish this thought <laughs> from our minds. And let us presume that the future will be full of his blessing and his fruitfulness. Um, I don't know if I could say anything else. These guys stole both my thunder, so... Um, any questions for the rector about the last year? Um, we have, uh, uh, finally, the business that we're about to take care of. Let me just say, first of all, we are having this year the largest turnover of, of vestrymen and vestry people that we've ever had at this parish. Usually it goes two, two, three, two, two, three. This year of three, we have two that, are, that also need to be replaced. That's five. So starting in December, we've got practically a, a brand new vestry. But I want to make sure to offer thanks for the, the, the time and ministry devoted 
by our outgoing senior warden, Tim Mock, thank you. Also to Mary Marchant, who's uh, finishing her full term. We want to give a thanks to Treva Porchman, if she can hear us in Florida, who began a term that was finished by John Evans, who took over as senior warden for a year. We want to thank Trent Payne, who's moved to uh, Charlotte now. And let's see, who have I missed that's rotating off? I think that's everybody except for Josh Kimbrell. In a way, he's getting more responsibility now. Uh, bylaws require that a, par uh, that a vestry member be a lay person. So now that he's been ordained, he cannot be a vestry person anymore. But thank you to Joshua for the ministry you did as a vestry vestryman on our, on our, at our church. We welcome already to our vestry uh, Michael Rock and Ginny Jervy, who are filling out those vacated terms of Joshua Kimbrell and Trent Payne. And in a moment, we will elect by acclamation three new uh, vestry people for the, a full three-year term, those three people being uh, Robert Attaway, Balbeer Bourne, and Janice Wofford. And so I tell you what, I can almost guarantee you there's no other reports and no old business. So let's just get right to it. Let's get right to it. Um, I'm going to say no further questions for the rector. We're moving on. Okay? Okay. Uh, new business, uh, vestry election ratification of uh, new members. Number one on our agenda item under new business then is ratification of candidates elected for the remainder of vacated vestry terms. Vacated terms are Trent Payne who has one year left and Joshua Kimbrough has one year left. Already elected as per our bylaws, uh, by, elected by the vestry are Michael Rock and Ginny Jervy. It's now before the uh, annual parish meeting and the, the congregation to ratify those elections. Can we have a, 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 well, any questions about that, how that works? They'll serve for one year. Uh, any, if there's no questions, I need a motion to accept those elections. Um, okay, it's been, the, her hand got first, so the motion by uh, Janet Hoyle was made and then seconded. Uh, by Sarah Spigner. Any discussion about the ratification of those two terms? Hearing none. All in favor of the ratification of those uh, two terms uh, the, in the elections that the vestry made, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. No opposition. No, oh, okay. Uh, no opposition, or uh, not enough opposition. Anyway, uh, the motion passes, and we, we welcome officially now Michael Rock and Ginny Jervy to our vestry for a one-year term. Thank you. The next item is the introduction of candidates for full vestry terms. I think I already did that. Robert Attaway, Balbeer Bourne, and Janice Wofford. I think you all know who they are, right? We don't need a... <laughs> the, their a short bio is in, is in your an, annual parish meeting packet. So let's get right to the election of vestry members. The term for nominations is over, and so we just have three spots and three people. Can I have a motion to, uh, uh, ex uh, to elect them by, uh, what's the word? Acclamation. John Hoyle? Uh, John Hoyle makes a motion to accept the candidates by acclamation, seconded by Gene Rivard. Thirded, is that a thing? No. <laughs> seconded is enough. It's on the floor. Any discussion? No discussion. We'll call the question. All in favor? Of the, oh, I haven't said the thing. <laughs> yeah, I can tell, it's time. All right, uh, I'm going to assume that you are saying aye to ratifying these, uh, or to, to the motion that was made by John Hoyle. Uh, all opposition? No opposition. Motion passes. Welcome to the vestry, Bob Attaway, uh, Val Beerborn, and Janice Wofford. You're on for three years. All right, uh, I will say this. We had no success this year at nominating uh, two delegates and one alternate delegate for the 2022 APA Deus Synod, partially because we didn't know where it was or when it was. Now we know it's September 14th through 16th next year at All Saints Anglican Church in Mills River, North Carolina, not that far from here. Uh, we've got two delegates and one alternate. Get four nominees, we have to have a vote. I don't want to do a vote. <laughs> it's complicated. Um, do we have any nominations? Mary Marchant has a nomination. I'd like to nominate Tim Mock. 
All right, Tim Mock has been nominated. Do we have any other nominations? Bob uh, Attaway had, or Bob uh, Ambrose? Mary Marchant. Mary Marchant has been nominated. That's two. Do we have a third nominee, Michael? My wife, Judy. <laughs> okay, that's three. A motion has been made that the nominations be closed. It's been seconded. All in favor of closing nominations, say aye. aye. Woo! Okay. <laughs> nominations close. Uh, and uh, we're just going to move on. Uh, we, will, we will fight it out amongst ourselves as to who are the delegates and who is the uh, alternate. I think we can decide that. Uh, anyhow, thank you for that. That's it. I move we Ah, the movement to adjourn. <laughs> Very good. Please, uh, Bob, go ahead. Yes. I would like Gail to do this, but I'll do it. Please pick up all your uh, stuff on the table and <laughs> bring it into the kitchen. And there's a big, I think you'd call it a garbage bag. Yeah. And place it in there. I'll be standing by the garbage bag. I, we would really appreciate it. And if you don't do it, I'll have Dale make it. Okay. <laughs> all right, the motion to adjourn has been made. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All right, motion passes. Let us pray. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Well done. <laughs>